you always say food first. You always say it starts with diet. But do you feel like people should also be skeptical? I mean, there are people that are skeptical that all supplements are bad. What would you say to them? Do you think all supplements are bad? Uh, I think that's a message that some people have like teach. They teach that food get first. your food from, get your supplements through food and don't take supplements. And I think that's a very um, incorrect message. I think people that are very, it causes a tremendous amount of bias the other direction. So yes, um, food gives us the things we need with a full complement of other accessory factors that help us get the most benefit from most substances like carotenoids, beta carotene. Beta carotene, for example, is one of a hundred different types of carotenoids that we're best getting from food. When you take just one substance called beta carotene and you're taking that without the other things that come along with it, it could then be something that blocks the uptake because you're taking one thing of the other, of the other full carotenoid spectrum or could have other negative effects. Taking something in isolation is usually not favorable. But, but the, the person explaining that, to then to use that, to say in a blanket form that supplements are bad and we should get what we need from food, that also is incorrect. Just because you're still not looking at evidence. Yes, with regard to beta carotene, it's advisable to get it from food, not from supplements. With regard, but that's for beta carotene. That doesn't mean everything. If we're going to say that, what about vitamin E? What about vitamin C? What about vitamin K? What about, well, you can't just take what's the study on beta carotene and extrapolate that to every other potential supplement. Mm -hmm. We have to look at each supplement individually and in an unbiased fashion, look at all the evidence, all the studies and all the evidence that's out there and put the evidence together to come to a conclusion. A good example would be zinc supplementation. Is it better to get zinc supplements from food or from supplements? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> I don't know. I know that you get more zinc from eating oysters and scallops and red meat than you do from eating beans and greens, even though they have some zinc in them. I can try to eat more beans and more greens to get more high zinc, more pumpkin seeds to get more natural zinc from my diet. But I know that the phytates in plant foods reduce zinc and exposure to about half what you get in the food. And we know that the zinc supplementation, zinc absorption goes down with aging. And we know that giving zinc supplements to people, let's say to people reduces risk of prostate cancer by 74%. Wow. 74% Re reduction of prostate mm. cancer. Wow. When you give zinc supplements to elderly, people who are still eating meat, it reduces risk of pneumonia death by about 50%. So we're seeing, so when we look at all the studies on zinc, is it beneficial for a for a vegan to take some zinc, especially as they age? And the answer is the evidence indicates that if you look at all the evidence. So we're not going to use the evidence of beta carotene and vitamin E being bad or not being good to then justify people shouldn't take any supplements at all. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, so the answer is that um, don't, tr you, we have to have a, um, a look at the whole picture. And the, picture, and the pictures are complicated. You can't have some philosophical bent and decision that all supplements are good, all supplements are bad. We have to say, well, in most cases, we're going to try to get our supplements from food. But you could get your, sup get your zinc instead of taking a supplement. You could just eat more oysters or more red meat. But the problem with that, which is going to lead to a better outcome? And right now, we know that oysters and scallops and high zinc-containing animal products are contaminated and shorten lifespan or increase neurologic disease from their high intake of BMAA and plastics and nanoparticles and other, and other toxins. So we're trying to get so... But in any case, it's, these are complicated questions, and you need somebody who wants to investigate the, and weigh the, the, weigh the choices here. And the choice here, for my people that I advise, is to... Don't rely on to get all your zinc from your diet. Yeah. Take a little extra and we'll get half of it from our diet and we'll take a little extra so we don't have to re rely on seafood to get all our seafood or red meat to get our zinc. Because seafood's the catch-22. You don't want to take something that gets your zinc up but then harms your diet in other ways. Right. Or what, 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 if, what if there were studies that showed that if we took an extract from, let's say, let's say resveratrol from, from grapes. Now, the studies on that are are very, are, are not solid. We don't really know if taking resveratrol supplements really extends lifespan or not. And I'm just not recommending it. But let's say if the studies were overwhelmingly positive and they weren't, 
vague and hard to decide. With all these studies, and we looked at all the data and all the studies on resveratrol, if they all were strongly positive, we shouldn't use a philo philosophical objection to using it, just eat the grapes. Well, no, the studies show in higher amounts, taking this extract from grapes has dramatic protection against cancer, and we probably should be beneficial to take it. I have no objection to using supplements when the evidence overwhelmingly shows there's benefits from them. Mm -hmm. You can't just use a philosophy and, and based on them uh, come to a conclusion, all supplements are bad. You know, yeah, and, I, and I think that 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 ha happens to be the case with some with taking some a little turmeric or curcumin or EGCG or so some of these things we're saying are overwhelmingly beneficial to use some of that in our food or to take a supplement with that, for example. So we have to take every decision individually and a comprehensive look at the literature that supports it or, or doesn't support it. So you just mentioned EGCG, which comes from green tea or turmeric, which you, is also you could sprinkle on your food. But in a supplement form, you're thinking there are certain antioxidants that could be really beneficial to the diet as well. Well, um, I, I'm not a person who like always uses seaweed. and I don't salt my food. So my food could be deficient in iodine. If I'm usually eating seaweed or seafood, I don't need to use iodine. So, but we want to at least meet the RDI for iodine, pay attention to what's lacking in our diet for sure, mm -hmm. you know. But and with regard to EGCG or, or curcumin from turmeric, those things, yeah, if I'm using a lot of turmeric and I liked it on my food, then I, but if I don't like to use a lot of turmeric on my food, I want to take, make sure I take a little bit. I'm not a person who's drinking green tea all day long either. I'm not a tea drinker, but I want to take a little bit of green tea as a supplement because there's so much studies showing a benefit from a little bit of EGCG from green tea. So you don't need, you know, so take a little bit of extra things that um, we're not utilizing regularly in our diet makes sense.